I've been using Sony's new WH-1000XM4 flagship noise cancelling headphones for almost two months now, and they've definitely been worth the wait. But at $350, you'll want to know what you're getting before you make the investment, particularly now that the previous generation XM3s are priced around $250. From my time with the XM3s back in December, I'm comfortable saying that either would make an excellent pair of headphones if you're looking for something that sounds very good, has industry-leading active noise cancelling, a solid 30-hour battery life with quick charging, and a companion app offering 5-point sound equalization in addition to many other features. Honestly, without listening to them side by side and really trying to tease out the minute differences, I don't think you'll be able to notice any major improvements in sound or noise cancelling, which is really a good thing because they were already excellent at both. Where the newer XM4s come out on top are the much improved microphone quality, the addition of a few new convenience features like an ear cup play pause proximity sensor and speak to chat functionality, as well as improved touchpad responsiveness and multipoint connectivity. But before we get into that, I would be remiss if I didn't at least provide you with an audio sample. Like I said, the sound quality is still excellent on the XM4s. They have a pleasant soundstage that's quite immersive for music and movies, with perhaps some minor improvements in overall clarity. One thing that Sony opted to change was the codec support for the XM4s, exchanging Aptex and Aptex HD for the DSEE Extreme Supplement, which uses an AI algorithm to boost the quality of compressed files. I personally can't really tell a big difference toggling this on and off with the app while listening to Spotify, but it's a nice feature to have if you're not listening to a high resolution source and using Sony's lossless LDAC codec, which is still available. Similarly, here's a sample of the active noise cancellation of the XM4s as heard through a lapel mic placed inside of the ear cup. Ambient sound. Ambient sound control off. Again, the noise cancelling was already top of the line, and it's still great with only minor improvements focused on the vocal spectrum. Sony still offers in-app active noise cancelling optimization and atmospheric pressure compensation in an attempt to tune the noise cancellation to both you and your environment. In terms of comfort, the 1000XM4s are excellent. I've been wearing them regularly for up to 6 hours at a time, and provided I seat them correctly on my head, I don't have any serious comfort issues. The earpads and headband have a little more cushioning than the previous generation, and they still provide a comfortable clamping force that allows me to wear them as I go about my day without worrying that they're going to fall off. Sony also made the internal cup lining a little plusher, which feels premium to the touch, but does have the consequence of retaining a little more heat. I've only found this to be an issue if I wear them out and about on a warm day, forcing me to take them off for a moment when I get home, but if you're sensitive to warm headphones, consider yourself warned. From a controls perspective, Sony has renamed the ANC or assistant button to custom, which I suppose is worth noting, but more importantly, the responsiveness of the touch controls, in particular, the engagement of ambient pass-through by covering the right ear cup with your palm, is much better than I remember with the XM3s. It's a small thing, but a very welcome improvement that makes the overall user experience more pleasant. Playback controls are all still touch-based and on the right ear cup, allowing you to play pause, skip tracks, and adjust volume on the fly. You can also configure the left ear cup's custom button to control either Alexa, the Google Assistant, or ANC toggling, 
And notably, if you choose the ANC option, then a long press of the right ear cup's touchpad will summon your assistant via whatever device you have connected. The headphone's ambient pass-through mode, which amplifies sounds from your surroundings so that you can engage with your environment, has also been improved to sound a little less staticky and artificial than the XM3s did. And though it's still not great, it's perfectly effective if you need to quickly engage in a conversation without taking the headphones off. What's new is that you now have more ways to use this feature. Sony's speak to chat functionality automatically pauses whatever you're listening to and turns on ambient pass through if the microphone detects you speaking. I like how it pauses what you're listening to rather than simply turning the volume down the way the palm covering technique works, but I have found that it's easy to engage this by accident if, like me, you occasionally hum to music or speak to yourself. Within the app, you can adjust the speak to chat sensitivity to a more or less sensitive setting, and you can choose for the amplification to target voices over environmental noise, as well as whether it remains engaged for 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, or indefinitely. Alternatively, Sony also offers adaptive sound control, which will automatically switch the headphones between noise cancelling and ambient pass-through levels depending on how the headphones are used. In addition to the activity-based settings of the previous generation, where sitting, walking, running, or being in transit could each have its own configuration, you now also have the ability to use learned or map chosen location-based configurations which could be quite handy if you want different settings for when you're at home versus at school or somewhere else, even though you're doing the same activity. And interestingly, for location-based changes, you also have the ability to alter the EQ profile and either engage or disengage the speak to chat feature. It would be nice to see these options added to the action-based controls as well. If you are going to engage adaptive sound controls, I would recommend turning off the notification and voice guide toggle in the app settings so that you don't get interrupted by a chime every time a change in your activity or location is detected. But if all of these ambient pass-through features seem a little much and you don't want to physically pause your music when someone is speaking to you, Sony has also included a proximity sensor inside of the left ear cup, which will automatically play or pause your content depending on whether you're taking the headphones off or putting them on. The sensor seems to engage about one centimeter outside of the ear cup, which has caused a few mistaken plays when I rest them around my neck, but it doesn't happen very often, and I suspect this is something that will improve with firmware updates. One of the bigger improvements of the 1000 XM4s is the inclusion of multi-device support, simply meaning that your headphones can be connected to two devices at the same time so you can listen to music on your computer but still receive calls on your phone without needing to jump into Bluetooth settings. This is a handy feature that I use daily when I take the dog for an afternoon walk and want to switch to listening to music on my phone, but I have had a few minor issues from time to time. Generally, if you're listening to content on one device and you want to switch to the other, you simply need to pause the first and start playing from the second. For me, this always works with Spotify, though from time to time there is a minor delay, but occasionally I have had an issue where I'll pause the music on my laptop, then try to play an audiobook on my phone, and the content starts, but no audio comes through. This isn't too common, but worth noting, and hopefully something that will be resolved quickly, because multipoint connectivity is really handy to have. You can also set up more than two devices within the app, but only two will be connected at a time, so you may have to swap one out if they're all in proximity to your headphones at the same time. Finally, the microphone on the 1000 XM4s has been vastly improved compared to the previous version, which was more or less unusable. I have no hesitation using these headphones for video conferences or for phone calls. This is an example of what they sound like in a recorded Zoom session in a fairly quiet room. And then this is what they sound like with the ambiance of a coffee shop being played quite loudly through the speakers around me. All in all, it's nice that the 1000 XM4's many features allow you to tune in your listening experience beyond sound controls so that your headphones are more intuitive to use. But if you don't think you'll use all of these bells and whistles, or the microphone, the previous generation sounds nearly as good and still offers some of the best active noise cancelling available. If you're interested in picking these up, or the previous version, I'll leave links in the description below. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.